Hi folks, this is Holy Fruit. Today I'm doing some detective's work to find out if Szechuan pepper is becoming feral in Germany. I'm here in the Botanic Garden of Heidelberg in one of the warmest and mildest areas of Germany. And just a couple minutes ago I found the feral Szechuan pepper near the Botanic Garden. So now, the first step after found something is to establish what it is. Since it's just nearby the Botanic Garden, coming here to check what Szechuan peppers are being cultivated here. Of course, I know already what Szechuan peppers to expect here because I've already made videos about them in this Botanic Garden. Santoxylum piperitum, the real Szechuan pepper. Mm. A very tasty relative of oranges and lemons. It's in the same family, Rutaceae. Yeah, you can taste the lemony taste. This is a pretty lemony pepper. It has a peppery element, a lemony element, a umami element, and most important of all, a neurotoxic element, which basically, yeah, changes your taste perception for a lot of things for up to two hours. So, right next to it is the much bigger, in all parts, Santoxylum simulans, the false Szechuan pepper. Yeah, it forms a really big shrub. The leaves and the leaflets are bigger. And also, it seems to be flowering and fruiting later in the season. Look at that. The fruits are still teeny tiny. You can still see a couple of the female flowers. See the stigmata here? Look at the tip of my index finger here. Two fruits, two stigmata. Okay, so we have two species of Szechuan pepper in the botanic garden. Now, f the next question is, are they escaping right here? Because most of the seeds, they will drop somewhere nearby. This is a place which hasn't been, where the grass hasn't been cut too often. But nope, I'm not, I cannot find a single escapee around here. Here this grass is being usually cut twice a year. You can see lots of seedlings here. Maple, cherry, this should be, what should this be? Um, frangula, here we have some Hawthorn. Nothing that looks like Szechuan pepper. Wild apples. Well, next step, let's check the hedge over here. Yeah, feral shrubs are being removed from time to time from the hedge, but here they have a chance to grow to an age of a couple years. Nope. Not a single one. Let's check again under Santoxylum piperitum. They have two plants here. I wonder if this is for pollination. Are they? If they're delicious, it should say so on the on the label. I don't see I don't see seeds on this one. I don't see fruits on this one, not a single one. So could this be a male plant? Look at those inflorescences. Quite long inflorescences. Very different. Well, no, actually they're quite similar to those here. But no fruits on them. Could have different reasons. Could possibly be male, but then it should say, say male and female on the labels. Could also be that this is a better pollination partner for this one than vice versa. Here, by the way, also a couple of the old fruits right next to the new ones. The old fruits from last year. Okay, so no fruits on this one, lots of fruits on this one. But no seedlings underneath. Okay, next thing, let's go outside of the botanic garden to the location where I found the feral plant. So here we are again, over there in the shade is the same hedge which is basically the border of the botanic garden. 
Now we are looking at it from the outside. And when we turn around, right here, where is it? Oh yeah, over here. I was just, yeah, chopping away invasive species like this Ailantus in those hedges. It's part of my job. When I spotted this thing, at first they thought that it's a black locust and wanted to destroy it. Turns out, it isn't. It's a Szechuan pepper. So, yeah. So we determined, well, we can determine the species of this one. Uh, everything is quite big. The leaflets are quite big. The plant is quite big and fast growing. Big thorns here. We are talking about those really thick thorns. <clears throat> so, quite definitely, Santoxylum simulans, not Santoxylum piperitum. Although we cannot exclude that it could be a hybrid because both species are growing here, but for now, I only see features of Santoxylum simulans. It's about, well, two and a half to three meters tall. Down there, like one and a half centimeters thick. Basically, no chance that it was planted here because nothing has been planted here for decades. As you can see, not much caretaking has been done here for decades. <clears throat> no, it hasn't been my responsibility for decades. I just took over the job to remove invasive species from those hedges. Well, so this thing, quite definitely feral. Quite definitely a seedling. And the interesting thing is it's already old enough and fertile enough, it seems, to produce a ton of edible fruits. Unfortunately, it's the species I don't like. I don't like Santoxylum simulans. I prefer Santoxylum piperitum. So, next question. How did it come here? Well, the peppery taste is in the, is in the skin of the fruit, while the seeds, well, they are hard and don't have a very strong taste. I don't know if birds or rodents or some other small animals, also a lot of leucistic leaves, I don't know why. Is this a disease or something? I also saw it on the Santoxylum piperitum in the botanic garden, or is it a deficiency, a mineral deficiency? Well, so who could have brought it here? Birds, possible, but birds, usually, they are careful with strange food stuffs they don't know even if it looks like a seed if it doesn't look like a seed they are used to they will be quite reluctant to eat it that's why a lot of exotic trees can survive in areas infested by fruit eating birds well infested by invasive fruit eating birds because the birds will not recognize them as edible so this stuff yeah a bird could have brought it here however Oh, look at that nice spine here right between the leaflets. Another one here, another one on the underside here. So a bird could have brought it here. It's one possibility, but I've never seen birds eating those things, and I've never seen traces that they've been eaten by birds. Another possibility is that a rodent was collecting seeds for its winter stash. That happens. And then usually next spring when they clean out the winter stash, a couple edible seeds or half edible seeds might still be inside. Third possibility is that it just came here by accident, like it was muddy and it stuck to somebody's foot and then got removed somewhere around here. This is not a spot where a lot of people would come. Well, not here. So I, I think still birds, birds are our best bet. Of course, it's also possible that the a twig got chopped up and got moved here together with some soil and the conditions were good enough moisture and nutrients that this twig took root. My guess would have been birds. <clears throat> well, next step is to check the literature, which of course I didn't do uh, on video, but did before. So Santoxylum, it was quite a quick literature check, but it's not... I didn't find anything for it being recorded as feral, as escaping in Germany. It is an invasive species in some parts of the world, and I found it in a report in a list of plants which are known as invasive. 
which are not established in Germany. But what does it mean established in Germany? Have they ever been recorded escaping in Germany or have they not? But are being cultivated in botanic gardens. So a little bit of a strange list. Uh, I would have liked to also have the, uh, the category escaped in this list, but it's just, it's not established, but it's cultivated in botanic gardens. So, yeah. Well, in Germany, botanists, they have kind of a special relationship with escaping plants. At first, when they escape around parks and gardens, nobody records them because it's just around parks and gardens. Then, a little bit later, when it starts escaping into forests, into the nature, they say, no, no, this is known to be only growing around parks and gardens. We will still not record it. A little bit later, when the stuff is everywhere, they say, this is so common, we don't even need to record it anymore. And so, despite hundreds of botanists seeing and often even recognizing escaping plants in the wild, most of them will not record them out of embarrassment that their colleagues will tell them, why are you wasting paper or why are you wasting data on recordings, I'm escaping thing, which is boring, until those things overrun the whole countryside and then nobody knows where they came from. So, folks, what do you think about... Szechuan pepper escaping in Germany. I mean, this is not a small seedling. This is a plant which is producing hundreds of fruits itself. What do you think about Szechuan pepper escaping in Germany? What do you think about the relationship of German botanists with escaping plants? Yeah, do you like Szechuan pepper and which species of it do you prefer? Tell me your thoughts about this very interesting plant. Apart from that, stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos. Finally, the fruit season is slowly starting in this cold German spring. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful and fruit-rich city of Heidelberg. And of course, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe.